Oh, it's me at Authentic Fee, and this is a podcast show on life lessons 21 and 23 from 140 Life Lessons I Wish I Knew at 20, aka FSB 140, on figuring out how to define success and getting about the task of pursuing your passion. We're doing a combo for y'all this month, continuing on last month's theme around graduation and figuring out the path forward for success. Lesson 21 is on defining success for yourself, uh, and lesson 23 is on how to pursue your passion. Uh, I can't think of any other person better to have this conversation with than my guest today, Kim Waller, who is my sister and my friend and my very first ever mentor. Kim, I'm grateful for you being on, on Authentic Fees show, and I know you're on the road, and I appreciate the fact that you made some time to actually fit this in. How are you doing? I'm doing well, and it's, you know, so delightful to see you in your element. Thank and to be you. able to join you on this on this podcast is super exciting. Um, and so I look forward to, to having the conversation with you. Thank you so much. And I'm grateful you've been an amazing friend and witness in my journey. And I'm grateful to you. We, we, you I've no, we've known each other now for over 20 years. And I'm looking forward to the next leg, God willing. Okay, so thank you for joining today. I, because you've had such a profound impact on my life, I really wanted to help propagate some of your insights because you've had a, a, a really dynamic career path. Um, and and I, I want to help uh, get some of your insights to the rest of the folks out there trying to go into the market and figure their, their paths out. So let's start with the basics. Can you tell us a little bit about your personal background and what you do now in terms of where you grew up, hobbies, general industries, and the position that you're, that you're in now? Sure, sure. So I'm from um, Bloomington, Minnesota. Um, I did my undergrad in Wisconsin. I am absolutely a Midwest girl. Um, I spent uh, the lion's share of my career in Chicago. Um, I have done everything from being a... I know, right? I love, love shot down. Love, love. I love shot down. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Growing up, I always wanted to live in Chicago, so we could go back to that, you know, in terms of defining your purpose and, and living your dream. So Chicago has always been where I wanted to live. Okay. Um, and currently, I'm a, a senior client partner at uh, Corn Ferry, which is a global executive search and um, organizational strategy and consulting firm. Sweet. So you're, so you do organizational search and consulting, you said. So now is that something that you always knew that you wanted to get into? I mean, what kind of led you down that path? How did you come to a place where you landed there, so to speak? Yeah, you know, um, in full transparency, I just started this new role within the last month. Okay. And Congratulations. In thank you. Thank you. I love it. Uh, and in reflecting on how I got here, it really is the sum total of my experiences. So hmm. when I was, you know, in undergrad, if you had said, what do you want to be? I would have said, I want to be a VP at a financial institution. I had okay, no idea. Undergrad? What okay. Undergrad. I would, I would have said, that's what I want. Okay. Right. And so I did that. Um, but my career, as you know, took many different turns um, where I now am in a place where the complete sum total of the work that I did as a labor economist to the work that I did with financial institutions to the work that I've done around org strategy and even more recently around org strategy through the lens of diversity, equity, and inclusion are all now coming together so that I so can bring those talents there. So your dots are connecting. Totally. Okay, so I, I I have to go back to what you said about the sum of parts because I think especially because this set the last last month and this month we're talking about kind of um, sharing our experiences to support all the the folks going into the into the labor market now and trying to figure out what they want to do and I think you know as an an undergrad I know my freshman year I had there was a lot of pressure for me to know or maybe I put it on myself to know what I wanted to do and to pick a major and kind of take this linear path. And I love what you just said, that it was the sum of your parts, but basically the sum of your, of your experiences, because it's not necessarily, necessarily a linear trajectory. It can be for some folks, if you go into engineering and you keep, you know, for example, but for you, it sounds like we have had a similar uh, background and, and it just kind of, for me, I, I followed my nose in whatever I was interested in. For you, was it 
was it the same or did you have a mentor or were you just allowing yourself to explore or was it based on job availability? Yeah. So, I, you know, again, I, I will say I, in retrospect, looking back on my career, I was laser focused on not failing. Okay. So let's be clear. But yeah. I'm not feeling very scrappy, right? So yeah. if I found myself in a position where it's like, ah, I don't know if this feels right, and I was like, okay, what's next? Okay. But in that, my core guiding principles on what I knew I was interested in, there were elements of that in each of the roles. So okay. that was the common thread in terms of my skill set, my desire, my competencies. It morphed into different roles, but that was that was the clear central point. Okay. That's, that's fascinating. So earlier on, did you, cause like I said, you had a profound impact on my life, I, or especially earlier. I don't know. I'm sure. I don't know if you know, remember this story or not, but I, so when I came out of uh, undergrad, 2002 UMass, there was, I believe a recession at the time and I couldn't find, I was in Chicago favorite, one of my favorite cities in the world. And I wasn't able to find full-time employment. I joined a temp pool and we were temping in the same company. I was temping at a company that you were a senior executive at. And I just remember my interview with you. Uh, and I could, I knew, I could, I knew immediately that you were serious about supporting kind of the underdog and the capable underdog basically. <laughs> and so um, I, I, I sensed that immediately and you walked that walk, uh, th you know, throughout my time there. So I, I wonder, did, were you, and, and watching how your trajectory has gone into diversity and whatnot, how, how did you make that shift? Is that something that that's always been instilled in you? Or is that something that because you witnessed it externally, or did, again, I keep going back to having a mentor because that's something that you did for me. I'm wondering what brought that out in you. Yeah, so I I grew up in Bloomington, Minnesota in the 70s when there were there were a handful literally um of of African American families. I think I had two Asian friends. I went to a high school of 2000, there were like six people of color, two were my siblings. So I grew up understanding what it meant to be other and feeling yeah. very comfortable because I had a family that instilled that in me, being comfortable and being able to navigate that. Fast forward, in my first leadership role, manager role, I looked around and I realized there's nobody that looks like me. And I knew I had the skill sets to be able to navigate through that yeah. uh, based upon where I grew up in Bloomington, Minnesota. And I realized that watching how other, some other people of color coming into a predominantly white corporate environment were running into those hidden or hidden rules, those those unwritten rules in terms of cultural norms, et cetera, the do's and don'ts. Preach, the, uh, they're hidden and, rules, and, and, right, 100%. Right, yeah. and, and watch them get massacred. Um, yeah. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to make sure that where I can, I'm going to support, help, advocate, and because I knew, I, I watched how my white male counterparts did it for each other, yeah. and so I'm like, as a woman of color, I'm absolutely going to do it if I have an opportunity. So when I met you, when you were sitting across from me in that interview, number one, I was like, who is this firecracker? Number two, I was like, holy mackerel, she's so smart. And, and and I knew that you were smarter than anybody else that I had seen coming through that door interviewing much less at your level. So I was like, oh, no, we got to have her. Um, but so I had zero corporate life. culture knowledge. And there's a lot there's a lot of nuance to corporate culture. There's a lot of nuance to corporate culture. And you helped me under you helped me navigate. Because, you know, for me, everything's pretty straightforward. And you can't always be that straightforward. <laughs> Yes. I got that later yes. in my diplomatic, but yeah, absolutely. What What's fascinating, Kim, is that a lot of people um, in their personal life live, you know, ha have, you know, I, my, my friends are like a Benetton commercial, right? So I, I have friends from all different, but to, to, to live and work in that and how you 
kind of breathe and put effort towards making it institution institutionalizing it because that's when it really becomes sustainable in terms of policy in terms of corporate governance in terms of boards in terms and so living that and making effort towards it is something altogether different and you ever since I've known you that's what you you've either been tangentially doing that even if it's not called upon you or focused on doing that and I, I just think that's fascinating I think and I and and it's a passion and I and I and I, I can't speak for you but I it, I feel like that's maybe the underbelly of what's driven aside from your effort and your drive and whatnot a lot of your success because you you just that's I feel like that's been your true north for, for sure for sure and 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 so when we when we think about the thing that I would say is it's important to understand your why and your purpose. And I don't say that as a flowery management kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I say that as you really do need to know or at yeah. least have some idea of why you're getting up every morning. Yes. Why, right? <sighs> For what, right? And so growing up, my father would always say, as a kid, all, all the way through, know what's about you. And as a kid, you're no, like, what Say that again. About? What does that say? No know what to value know yeah, what to oh value my God, yeah I, right? I didn't and get I'm that like, lesson well, until much later until i sat down right? I was like, okay, here are my values and now i'm calibrating i didn't get that until much later exactly and i think part of that was again the realization that my parents put up where we grew up and so they're like okay these little chocolate chips are walking in we need to make sure that they know who they are right yeah. and, and to navigate through it successfully and so being able to go back home to uh, an African-American family with strong family values and who instilled the power of who we were and then navigate the environment that was open, right? It wasn't a horrible experience at all. I was a leader and all of that other good stuff in high school yeah. and in, in grade school, but knowing who I am and knowing what to value, that was instilled early. And that then helped me navigate through corporate America um, and then the other thing that I had a CEO say, which stuck, stuck, stuck with me, which was know your distinctive value. So it's a little iteration from what my father had said and knowing what to value. So know your knowing, value and you're knowing your distinctive value. Exactly. And so once I heard that, I was like, well, I know the industry. I have been afforded mentors going back to your point around mentorship. And I know I'm an I'm an I'm a unique oddity. I'm a unique I'm a unique, a unique entity in that there aren't many African American females in this industry, in this company that look like me. And so instead of trying to norm to the majority or play it down, I'm like, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm the only one. <laughs> I'm the only one right now. I'm gonna bring more but I'm, but I know who I am and I'm going to speak to that and bring my knowledge of the industry, my ability to negotiate all those other technical pieces, but in the body that I'm in. I think it's so important what you just said about just basically knowing who you are and embracing who you are. And it's a blessing that you got that early on. I think for, so for me as a third culture kid, it's a bit of, it's a very similar experience, but a different from a different, I guess, context. I didn't, um, I didn't get that until much later. Uh, I kind of I'm very anchored in who I am and my value system. And so getting very clear on that, there's a huge, if you got that earlier on, it's a huge blessing. Cause like I said, then it kind of drives your, your, your compass basically. But what, what I want to, I want to go back for one second and, and, and talk about your, uh, career path a little bit earlier on. So when you, uh, your undergrad, uh, you wanted to do VP of, uh, be a VP of finance. And so when you came out the gate and you mentioned you were a labor economist for a little bit, you did several different things. But in when, because for me, one of the things and every single thing that I, I, I know, the reoccurring theme that I noticed was around service. And so for for you, you did you notice early on, very early on, that the reoccurring theme for you was around diversity, Even, despite the fact that you had several analytical kind of skill sets um, and capabilities? Was that kind of the the driver for you? Yeah, no, it was really more around 
knowing the power of relationships okay. broadly. Okay. Right. It was. It, I, I watched people that ascended, and it was clear that in order to be able to do it, you needed to have your cohort, right? The people that were going to speak on your behalf when you're not in the room that yes. are mo- that are both senior, right? Yes. And, and and even those people that are at your level, and then those people that quote unquote are underneath your level, because there's no way that I think that you survive a corporate environment without having people look out for you, and you in turn looking out for others. Oh, there's, it, there's, any institution, right? any institution, and this this God bless my sociology degree. Any institution when you have kind of that those many that many compartments, you need champions. And so I, when I hear people talk about empowerment and institutionally facilitating empowerment i could be a go-getter i could be you know effective i can be capable i can be smart i can be all those things but to the point that you mentioned earlier about kind of the unspoken rules you need to have a champion in those in those kind of vortexes where you don't necessarily have access to yet who can champion you and a lot of times those are men uh yeah 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 and so I, I it's it's great that you brought up that point you you nailed it um i i wanted to ask you about success it sound it, i could be wrong but it sounds like what success quote unquote success means to you sounds like it may have shifted it may not have but so for me it, it definitely shifted so now for me success is freedom and, and freedom when i say freedom it's freedom for me in terms of uh time I'm free to manage my time. Um, and so I, but whereas before it was monetary or position or title or, and I'm not knocking any of those things uh, at all, but what was success for you? What did success look for you at right out of college? And what does it look like for you now? Yeah, right out of college, it was title and money because yeah, I had I, no idea. Yeah, <laughs> I, I had no idea. I didn't know any better. I had no idea. Yeah. Right? It's like, oh, title, money, and the brand. Right? A marquee company. Yeah, yeah one of right? the, the you know blue chip. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, yeah. Back in the day, the thought of entrepreneurship back in the day in the our old ages are um um wasn't even a thing. Um, but yeah, title and money. But what happened was, as soon as I became really uh, a senior manager, not even a managing director, as soon as I became a senior manager, I was like, whoa, this is different. And then that no longer became the driver. Wait, 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 time out. When you say this is different, can you you double click on different? Yeah, different meaning the stress, the expectations. For sure, when I became a managing director, the game became hardball. It yes. was a whole different game. Oh, it was a whole nother level of Super Mario Brothers, 100%. Yes. Oh, my God. Isn't that I funny? That, yes. yes. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I thought, you know, even my men, my mentor sponsor, who had been traveling with me all throughout my career, advocating for me, it flipped. As soon as that happened and we became peer, peers, it became game on. Oh my God, yes. People freak out when you start to become quote unquote successful. People just flip. It was terrible. It was terrible. And I learned then, I was like, well, you know, there was a bit of me because all throughout my career, there had been somebody like every two to three years that was advocating for me, promoting me. And I really just didn't have a whole lot of friction in the system. When I became a managing director, then it was Now you're competition. I'm competition and it was fierce. and I, I find that I find that fascinating. I find, and I'm trying really hard not to use a, a derogatory because everyone has a different experience. You know, everyone has a different. Everyone's in a different place on their journey. So I just because one person's going to be happy for another one doesn't mean that every single person's going to be happy. But I, I really, I genuinely find it fascinating that the people that support you along your path, what, once they start to see you actually getting to where you're you're trying to go kind of tense up a little bit you know what i think it happened faster than he anticipated yeah specifically i think the expectation was he was going to continue to be the amazing mentor sponsor for me throughout my career and then when he was ready 
to retire, he would then hold and pass the baton on to me. Yeah, it's controlled. Yeah, yeah, and I think it just—it was all happening too fast. And and I don't think I don't. You know, that's why when people say, "Oh, this is business," it's not—it's not emotional. I'm like, it is absolutely relational and emotional. Uh, yeah. Because I don't think that he meant it in that way. I think he couldn't control his emotions about it. So, Girl, you are preaching. It's, and it's Sunday, so go ahead. It's Today's your day. Friday's my day, but today's right. your day. <laughs> right, right. But then again, it goes back to know what to value because otherwise it will take you off your square. Yeah. Right? So, okay, wait, wait. Because no. I need to hear this right now. So you're saying basically you're not you're not anchoring, you're not linking your your validation on that. Base is that what you're saying? You can't. Yeah. A hundred percent. I I just I need to like clap for a second. Let's clap together. <laughs> well, oh because and then I mean, real talk as as a person of color. Or, or any level of difference, you have to know that in, it, we're moving, we're transforming. But this was like 20 years ago, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. And back so, then, it was a different ball. It was a, it, it, an even harder ball game. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And so it's like, you know, you need to be your own cheerleader. You need to have your yes. own theme song. Yes. You know, you really do. And I if you are in I the tiger. Team, Rising right. up, there you go. back on the street. Because <laughs> I always got to break out 80s karaoke. I just have to. <laughs> take, my time, take my chances. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I like it. Yeah. And so when there are times when you get, when it's tough, when you get hit, when you get beat down, everybody, irrespective of race, gender, et cetera, et cetera, has those moments. Yeah. The only question is, has the institution been set up to affirm you? Yeah. And if the institution and its culture hasn't transformed such that it recognizes talent that looks different than the majority, then you for sure need to have your own song. You need to yeah. know what to value so that you can continue to navigate that organization and be successful. 100%. Because the organization will come around, right? What I have witnessed is in my career, organizations that I've been a part of taking a broader lens at what they see talent as, as a result of seeing talent that looks different succeed. 100%. So you have to, you have to stay in the game and succeed, which is why you need to have your, your, your theme song my theme to song. help encourage you. Yeah. Y'all can use my theme song if y'all need to go ahead. That's my theme song. <laughs> So I, I want, because I know you're on the road and I don't want to keep you for too long, but I want to just circle back really quickly and ask you about success for you now. How do you, because, and you have a lot of different, you have a lot of different um, passions aside from the ones that we've discussed. Uh, so how do you define success for you now? Is it still around the, 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 the title and the, the position and monetary? Not. Thing? Yeah, no, it's so funny. Not it is not title and position at all. Okay. Um, what I care about is is making a real impact. Yeah. And I and I don't mean fluffy. I mean if 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 I I want to make sure that whatever I'm doing, it's done with integrity. It's done in a way that if what I'm doing is posted on the front page of the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times that I'm not ducking and dodging cameras, right? Yeah. So I need to be true to who I am. Um, and I want to make an impact and have it be a positive one. So to the extent that I can be, you know, this is used a lot, but a servant leader, or to the extent that I can support and help someone else, and sometimes that someone else is a, on a macro level in terms of systems of change as organizations think about, you know, this last year, and organizations thinking about addressing issues of systemic racism. Well, what does that look like? The consulting that I'm able to do now is to help organizations think about what that means and help them to un unplug those systems so that all talent has an opportunity to ascend. So I care about impact, uh, you know, title and money, that, that, that can float away at any point in time. So it will come. So, so, you're, so you link your success now, it's basically 
correlative to how much impact that you feel like you're having in the world. That's, that's, that, when did you come to that? Right after I went through the battles of being a managing director under fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's like mid-career basically. Was that mid-career for you? Yes. Okay. For sure. So that was mid-career for you. Um, and, and, and for you, um, it was, it, it sounds like it was linked or maybe it wasn't, you tell me, I don't want to put words in your mouth, linked again to your, to your passion. Cause in my view, there's an inextricable link to success and passion, uh, and, 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 and figuring out your passion takes figuring out your passion. You, you're a labor yeah. economist. You're well, for me, yeah. I was, you know, I waited tables. I, I got, I got something from every experience. Um, yeah. so it, and I think for a lot of folks, the two are linked. Um, yeah. But what, what it, that, it sounds like there's, that's something that came to you later, not necessarily yeah. out the gate. No, not out the gate, not out the gate. But, but through my experiences, again, as a woman of color in corporate America, I realized that I had a responsibility in my value set, that I had a responsibility to help others that were coming through that may not have had the privilege of having others that were sponsoring them early in their career. So I'm like, okay, I have to give back in, in, a, in a real way. And it started on an individual level, then it started on, a, on an organizational level, and now it's on a much more, a much broader level, on a much more macro level. Uh, well, I will just say um, that I have, I've always said that struggle either breeds um, resentment or compassion and i and i i'm so grateful that you have been a mentor of mine for a, the the last couple of decades and a dear friend of mine still uh i'm grateful for that and i'm so thankful for you coming on the show today and sharing your experiences so other people can take um the lessons from your life path sooner uh, and, I, and that was kind of the objective from today. And so with that, I will close out uh, this podcast show. Unless, Kim, there's, if you have any parting words that you want to say in terms of folks coming into the labor market, anything, that, any last minute advice that you want to share with them? Yeah, no, I would just say again, really embrace who you are and what you bring to the party and do not hold back. Right, find those people that are going to champion you. They'll find you. Actually, they're they're going to see you and they're yeah. going to champion you. Don't hold back. Don't don't hide your light. Don't hide your brilliance. Give it all. Let it shine. And it it really is a new day for for talent. And so I'm excited to see your journey as you continue to rise and ascend, and what others that are listening to your podcast do as well. Thank you so much, Kim. Those are the perfect closing words. And with that, y'all, we're going to close out for lessons 21 and 23 from FSB 140. Just a quick reminder that the book drop is, the book drop has happened and the book is out. I'm grateful for you, Kim, for joining us today and grateful for anybody who's listened to this. Uh, and I hope you got everything that you needed out of it. And with that, that's a wrap, folks. Even though it's just me. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>